Lee John, hello. Good afternoon, good evening and good night. Look at you. <laughs> the interview's not over yet, is it? Uh, welcome to Virgin Radio, Virgin Radio 80s Plus. I know you've got lots of friends here. James Whale, who That's was right. on the other That's week, right. kind of connected me with you. Mm-hmm. And it is great to meet you. We've got so much to talk about. Uh, your tour, um, everything you're connected with with Black History Month. We'll talk oh, yes. about that soon as well. Yes. First of all, this is very unkind of me, but I know that you're going to accept this. Mm-hmm. I'm going to chuck at you a random question, a song that's not on your list. Can we start this week with an imagination song? Yes, you may. As we're doing our tour next week, we start our tour in May, the Flashback Tour. There's <laughs> Can you do that again? Flashback! <laughs> so basically, everybody out there, in May, we start our Flashback Tour. So you can go to my website and get tickets. I'm plugging straight away. So this is for your 40th anniversary it's 40, isn't it it's the 40th bit we kind of lost a few years because of the lockdown and stuff so we're celebrating the 80s we're celebrating the music of imagination and lee john and we're celebrating 40 years starting with the flashback tour which starts in may so we're starting up now we're on our way amazing tell me go. about this song tell me about a bit about this <laughs> well, song as you know, we go into when it I recorded flashback um we'd had our hits body talk in yes. and out of love and in other territories, we had a number one from the Body Talk album, Tell Me Do You Want My Love. And I remember Burning Up was a huge, huge classic hit. And in America, we were in top 10 in the R&B charts with So Good, So Right and Burning Up together. A lot of people don't even realize we were in the top 10 in America. Wow. And at the time, I recorded a ballad called Don't Look Back, which is on the Body Talk album. And I then recorded right after that, the same day in the night, flashback, and my voice had been singing all day, all day, and I was in this really cool mood. And I wanted to sing it, I wanted to do flashback the day after, but they were saying, look, you know, studio time, budgets. So I did it. So what you heard was me doing it straight away, straight Amazing. after. So this yeah. is a one hit, one, like a one take wonder. Oh, yeah, it was a one take. Amazing. Definitely, I did all the choruses. And then basically at the intro, I wanted, I didn't want a drum beat or anything. So at that time, remember it was tape, it was analog tape. And you normally, nowadays, everything has a click track and everything to it. I had no click track, so I had one take to get it right. Wow. And only only thing I had to keep me in time were the chords, were the Fender Road chords. That's amazing. And it was coming up slowly, so I had to keep the tempo. And if I didn't do it right, we couldn't use it. Wow. So the beginning, you hear... Lee, that's just showing off. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was, you know, it was fun. It was a lot of fun doing it, but I said, I've got to get it right, because I want this intro. Intros, to me, of songs were always so important, so... Even with Illusion, with Music and Lights, all those kind of hits we had, it was always the intros were so important. Uh, we're going to go into your list of songs now. You've gone for, well, here's the greatest dancer. Tell me about this. Wow. I remember there was a club in London, not many people know this, and it was called Adams. And a friend of mine, Vernon, who's no longer with us, he was a DJ. And I remember he was there, and I think he was DJing, and he played this. This is on an import record. And I thought, wow, you know, I, I, it just... It has special memories and then you know when you become you're an idol of fans like I was with Sister Sledge and I met them in the, in the mid 70s when I was in school when they had um, the track uh, Mama Never Told Me Look Out For The Wild Man I remember that and then you know n- then they had this you know oh, wow, wow greatest dancer then the next minute I'm on tour with them wow so in 2000 we did a tour of the UK we headlined at the Palladium they headlined in, in Edinburgh but we were on the tour bus together we had Kathy, myself and her sisters Debbie we had a great time we became really great friends so it's it's and even now you know we, we speak through Instagram and stuff like I was going to ask you yeah. so you keep inside. What's, oh, yeah. what is that like in a nutshell meeting people that you looked up to and then next thing you're on the road with them and you and you know them and they're in your phone book it's, it's bizarre because you know all of a sudden you you're exchanging your thoughts their thoughts your ideals your feelings it's a it's a different thing the same thing happened to me with mary wilson of the supremes who were great friends um because she was on my chat show lee's place in the late 80s and then she invited me when i went to los angeles to her house Next minute, I'm a great friend of the Supremes. She's ringing up my mum's house saying, where's Lee John? You <laughs> That's know? amazing. You know, and she, every time she came to London, we'd all go to dinner with all my friends, and my friends became her friends. And it's just a wonderful exchange. And she, she gave me, I think, the lesson. She said, look, you know, you've had success. You're doing the same thing. We're all doing a job. You know, we're all doing a service. And it's about the fans. And she taught me a lot about the industry as I was, you know, growing up in it because she's had the experiences with Diana Ross and Supreme. So it was great. So it's um, it's a camaraderie. It's, it's, I think we're all part of... Um, it, it, we're, we're a family, in a sense, you know. I mean, there's so many people that I, I know in the industry now, 40 years. So 
you don't see everybody all the time, but you know, it's it's um, as long as we're still out there doing it and keeping it positive. So Can I ask you about Eurythmics, Sweet Dreams? Sweet um, dreams are made of these. What a song this is. I know. I, I sometimes sing it in our show. Do you? Yeah, I kind of just do an ad lib. Is I, it an easy one to sing? Um, I, yeah, possibly. I mean, everybody knows the words. Yeah. It's that kind of thing. Everybody sings along to it. So she's so iconic, Annie Lennox and Lou Rhythmics and, and Dave Stewart's very talented. I met him um, in Los Angeles when we were recording in the late 80s. And Annie we were doing a photo session in King's Cross before it became what it is now. Uh -huh. It was a photo studio. And we were doing the, I think we were doing the cover for our third album, Scandalous. And we were very scandalous in those days. And there was a prenuptial um, photo session going on with all these bride things going on. And Annie was wearing, I think, a, an army hat and something. It was for the Face magazine. And we were doing a separate session. So we just jumped into these bride made ga gowns and we're just <laughs> clowning around. And we, there's some picture somewhere with us and Annie. I don't know. If oh, I'd love to see it's it. It's hysterical. It's really hysterical. Can I ask you a fascinating question as a musician? Mm. What do you, because this song is really special, isn't it? It's kind of like retro futuristic at the same mm. time. Mm. And even now when you hear this, I, I was in Los Angeles just before Christmas and it randomly played and everyone went berserk. What is it about this song that's so special? I think basically, it sends you back into an era. I think the synthesizers, especially in, in Sweet Dreams, you can hear da 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 it, it sends you into this zone. And then following that, you have to play something else that falls into that. Maybe it could be um, Duran Duran or something like that. But I find with um, uh, when that, that the album it came from, I can't remember the name, uh, it was in its own entity you know, musically in its own entity. It was synthesized, but at the same time it had this sort of, a, can I say a drug, drug, a drug in us? I don't know. Is that yeah, it yeah. is, isn't it? It had that kind of feeling to it. She was like a white Grace Jones. That's how I kind of saw Annie. You that know? is an amazing analogy, yeah, isn't that's it? That's how I saw that's her, it. because she was that way politically in her thoughts and, her, and, and what she, you know, and how she put, pushed herself and stuff like that. Yeah and how vocally she's very different as well. So she has her own different sound. You know it's her. I'm very excited about this next artist, next track, because you're the first person to ever ask for Misha Paris. Really? I'm a huge fan of Misha Paris. Oh. And, um, you know, uh, what a talent. Mm. What a talent. Represent I always remember 12, 13, learning of Misha Paris and buying a cassette and loving the records that are out there. Do you know her? Have you oh, worked yes. with her? Tell oh me about gosh. her. Misha, she's like family. I mean, yeah? You know, I love Misha. Um, she's, uh, I said, one of the, the, the biggest black female voices of the UK. She reminds me, and I said it to her, she reminds me of a, uh, a British Natalie Cole. Right. Because Natalie Cole could sing anything, you know, and, and Misha was on that level. I first met Misha at a Whitney Houston concert reception. I think it was at the Inn on the Park or Holiday and something like that. Mm. And she grabbed onto me and said, you know everybody in this place, I'm sticking with you. <laughs> and I thought, you don't know who I am. And I said, yes, I do. Because yet again, her album was on 4th and Broadway and Russell gave me her album. It's so good. So good, so good. A beautiful song. Oh, I played that whole album and I couldn't believe she was from the UK. And subsequently, I had a chat show, Lee's Place, and I think it was one of the first times she'd been on TV. She was on my show. Yeah. Um, I think I was with um, Courtney Pine as well on that show. Remind me of that show. That show used to go out, when was it? It was kind of late 80s, wasn't it? Was it was the late 80s, I think, 87, 88. I had a chat show called Lee's Place on LWT. Every Saturday night, you yeah. come home from the clubs and turn on, and there, there it's kind of like was. half eleven midnight, wasn't it? Yeah, it was Around. from Night Network. That's it. Night Network. Remember, we didn't have late TV until the late eighties. Yeah, you couldn't believe that. Yeah, that was that a game ago. changer of a show, wasn't it? Yeah, oh, definitely. Because I got so many artists on there: L, um, London Community Gospel Choir. I had Dennis Brown. I sang with um, Will Downing. Narada Michael Walden. Wow. So I interviewed a lot of people. Um, and it's I'm, I'm trying to get all the tapes back so I can probably put it out there again. So are they on YouTube? See. I haven't... I've... A few of them are. Oh, a okay. A few of them Go are. On. I had a wonderful... There's On YouTube, there's a wonderful duet with myself and Aswad singing one, Bob Marley's One Love. So it's, that's on, on YouTube. But it was a great show because it was in a bar. It was very, very chilled out. It was like 
late night good late night viewing these days you don't really get that late night viewing no we don't have that anymore do we there was that that intimacy even like top of the pops it was a a, a must view for the family on a thursday night everybody crammed the tv so you know the next day everybody's going to talk about what they saw on top of the pops so lee john uh, the great thing is having your mice playlist this week you you've known or you work with or you your friends with most of the artists we're talking about got to ask you about grace jones she's come up a couple of times in the conversation (laughs) do you know her yes i was very good friends with her brother who passed away recently he loved my jazz album feel my soul and he said on their tour boss they used to play the feel my soul album they love my track sensuality um, and I thought, really? Wes likes that? He said, yeah, yeah, they play it all the time. But they loved Imagination, of course. Yeah. And Grace and I did a show at the Zenith in France in the, was it the 90s or 20-something or the other? Together, there was a lot of artists and she was mm. on there. And her son, I've worked with recently, um, he's on a track on my new album, which is going to come out next year. Oh, wow. Yeah, he's very, That's very amazing. talented. He's very, very talented. And she's iconic. She truly is iconic. What is it about her? I think that she pulled the en- pushed and pulled at the envelope. I said, push up to the bumper, baby. She did everything. <laughs> I mean, Grace is flawless. And believe me, I've seen her on the floor. <laughs> so here we go. A question I've got to ask you, because I do love her. And it's funny you mentioned Annie Lennox before. Yeah. They're kind of the people that you, you can't stop looking at. There's mm. just something about them, isn't there? But is she scary? Um, she can be. She can be. We were at a party and there's too many people coming up to her and she started waving her hands around like helicopter, helicopter, you know, to push people back. So, you know, but she's, you know, she can be very real, very down to earth and stuff like that, you know, but sometimes around her, she has a lot of sycophants. That's what I see. Mm-hmm. And that's what, unfortunately, you don't get to know the person because you've got all these people saying yes, yes, no, no, whatever yeah. around you. And I kind of that's not where I'm at I have I have people that have been with me for 30, 40 years mm-hmm. my musicians have been with me a very long time we kind of know who's kind of cool and who's kind of not so but, but everybody has their thing but with Grace she um, uh, she had great stylists great everything you know um, you picked a Shalimar song yes, next which one are you picking and why Lee? I picked gonna make this a night to remember <laughs> Because Jeffrey Daniels, when he first came over on Top of the Pops, he was by himself, not with the other guys right. and ladies. Um, and the, I think, PR person was representing him. We were all doing Top of the Pops. They brought him to our dressing room and said, look, Lee, could you look after this, this, this young gentleman, Jeffrey Daniels, because um, we, you know, we, we've got other stuff to do. So they just literally threw him in our dressing room. Because normally you all have your own separate dressing room. Yeah. He didn't know anyone. And I heard that they were really strict, so you were told to sit in your dressing room. All day. And, yeah, and, I, yeah, and it's so unglamorous, isn't know, it, this Top of the Pops thing? Really, Is like, that true? Yeah, a bit of like a dungeon. You know, it was a really... <laughs> it wasn't... It was not glamorous at all. Right. And Jeffrey had just come from the States, so we became great buddies. We were having cracking jokes... And it was when he did the moonwalk on top of the pops. We had our, our track looking at midnight, which was in the chart at the time. So we became great friends. And subsequently, you know, he's, he lives in Nigeria. I've been in Nigeria. He introduced me to um, Fela Kute's family. I did a, because of him, I got to Nigeria to do a, a, a festival. There wow. Just Jeffrey from that Daniels. chance meet. It's all yeah. Up. Yeah. And we've, we've kept in contact. He, you know, he liked fashion. I like fashion. You know, we like the music. Um, and you know he's he's very pro UK. He's you know along with Howard Hewitt. So, and the thing is, yet again, I was a fan of Shalimar. You know, take take me to the bank and you know, I owe you one and all these all the hits they had. So, it's great when we exchange. You know, and he told me actually. I remember he told me he was in Japan because he was doing choreography for Michael Jackson, and they were in the lift, and they heard in and out of love. And he said, oh, that's my friend, Lee John. And Michael Jackson said, oh, I want to hear this song. So he played In and Out of Love to Michael Jackson. He told me that story. Wow. So there's magic moments. God, you know? how did that make you feel when he oh, said that? Oh, gosh, I was over the moon, you know. And then he got me tickets to see Michael at the Dangerous Tour. Did you ever meet Michael? I did. I met Michael and his brothers in 1978, I think. They just had Shake Your Body. They were at the Rainbow Theatre and The Real Thing supported them. Yeah. Um, And I met him again on the Dangerous Tour. Wow. What was your thinking when you met him? Because it it, is interesting, those two different eras, meeting him. Well, the Jacksons, we all wanted to be a Jackson. 
you know, when we were kids. We all wanted to be a Jackson 5, Tito, Randy, Marlon, whatever. You know, you just, you know, you're, you're kids. And I love the music. I love Motown music. And as it changed going into the 70s, you know, they had Dancing Machine and then they went to Epic with Shake Your Body and Enjoy Yourself. And, you know, um, and I love my music. I always, I buy a lot of vinyl. So anything that came out, you know, even the, the ones that weren't commercial hits, you know, um, so when I was speaking to him, he'd just done The Wiz with Diana Ross. Wow. So he was talking to me about that experience. So, you know, I'm, I'm, why I'm so full of all these knowledge, because I'm, I'm starting to write my book. Finally. What a book this is going to be. Yeah, there so, are a lot of people going to be very excited yeah, a lot to see if they're there. in this book. Oh, well, you know what's been going I've been going back. So next year is going to be a flashback year. Great. So for me, it's going to be fun and celebrating the music. Now, this is exciting because this na next track, you, I think you sung on this, didn't you? Yes, this is Heat Wave, yes, isn't it? it? Which is. one is it? It's Find It, Find It in Your Heart. I haven't warmed up yet, but still. And this not, is not so a lot, good. A lot of people don't know that I sang on the very last Heat Wave album. Really? And uh, we had just had our second single, In and Out of Love, in the charts, and Johnny Wilder and his brother were looking at the video of us and. Um, they wanted us to sing on their album. So I think that had Ashley and myself come down to the studio and uh, we did two tracks. Um, what's the other one? Uh, Find It In Your Heart and Naturally. Mm -hmm. And But it was a kind of a ploy because they were trying to see whether I was good enough to join Heat Wave. Oh, okay. So there was a little story going on. There was a backstage story because they took our Body Talk album to Quincy Jones and Quincy Jones and Rod Temperton were listening to our album. This is what Keith Wilder told me years later. Mm -hmm. And they said, this guy could join Heat Wave. Now, we'd only had our second single, so they were trying to steal me from Imagination wow. to join Heat Wave. You were in demand. I, I would that time. <laughs> oh, I'm still out. <laughs> Do you know the amazing thing is about you and looking at your um, discography, your back catalogue, there are probably lots of people with records with you singing on them, mm. although you don't know that it's you singing on them. Very true. Because you've done so many kind of dance records, like yes. in the 90s and the yeah. noughties. Oh, you've yeah. done garage records. Yes, Mind, it, Body and Soul. Amazing. I mean, the thing is, like, Mind, Body and Soul was DJ Fantasy. Um, I've had people, oh, God, all the... All, the, the youth of that time they all knew it and so they come back to me and say oh that was my record that was my that was my tune you know yeah um mighty power of love you know with um mood to swing you know who great friends lem springsteen mm -hmm. so i've had a really close tie with the dj circuit arthur baker you know we had let there be love with tata vega um yeah there's a lot of there's stuff. loads there's stuff. and they're all yeah. great tunes yeah. they're all like you know stood the test of time you you must be very proud yeah I, I had great fun i mean for example club 69 um we had a hit with a track called sugar pie guy which i sang on and i wrote um and there was another one called fantasy which was on my answer machine you remember that <laughs> yeah answer machine? yeah and uh, i put the i played the music i actually played on this uh in sonic keyboard i did all the keyboard parts and then i sang on top of it and it was on my answer machine and, and the producer heard it and said i want this track on my album i said yeah but it's on the answer machine so he re he took parts of it and redone it and you know so it's been cool it's been really good lee john thank you so much for coming in it's thank great to meet you me. best of luck i'll come and see the tour please please there we don't go forget there'll to be get others your tickets. Tour. <laughs> get your tickets here we go